Hi, I'm Chelsea, and today I'm going to show you how to edit some portrait pictures. I'm also going to go over a few common mistakes that beginners make. One more thing, I want to let you know that a new edition of our book, Stunning Digital Photography, is out. For $8.99, not only do you get an ebook, you get six hours of video. Now, about half of that we give to you for free on YouTube. If you don't want to be a cheapskate, you can pay the $8.99, get three more hours of video, and also one-on-one -on -one support from me and Tony in our private readers group. So you might want to check this out. I want you to check it out. So I don't know why you wouldn't do that. So let's get to the video. I'll stop plugging my book, and I will show you how to edit those pictures. The first picture that I'm editing, I'm going to edit almost exclusively in Lightroom, and that's a picture of my daughter, Madeline. So I have this picture selected and I'm going to click develop to edit it. The first thing that I'm going to do is crop this photo because I don't like her dead center and I want to follow the rule of thirds. So let me pull in this side here and get her in that corner. And I like that crop so I'm going to press enter and it crops the photo for me. The next thing that I'm going to do is give this photo the mood that I would like. So I took this photo at the beach with some backlighting, and you can see their hair is lit up, um, her face is in shadow a little bit. So I'm going to bring out the shadows and um, kind of give this picture a matte effect by not making it too contrasty. I'll do that by bringing up the blacks. As you can see, by bringing up the black point, I bring out her face. So let me show you. It was in shadow. It was... Really, her hair was the main focus, all of those uh, lit up flyaways. And then I bring up the blacks, the black point, and you can see that her face is less in shadow. Um, to give this photo a mood, I'm going to play with the colors a little bit. So this is a photo that I'm going to process a little more than I normally would. It's going to be a bit less natural, but it's going to have, like I said, the mood that I like. So I'll go down to split toning. And for the highlights, I'm going to select a yellow. And for the shadows, I'm going to select blue. And to make it a bit more natural, I'm going to take the saturation on the highlights and just move the slider down a little bit. And the same thing with the shadows. I'm going to take the saturation and just bring it down to my liking. So now it has a nice warm tone to it. Next I'm going to slightly bring up the exposure just to make the picture a bit brighter. I'm also going to raise the shadows also to brighten it up. So let me go over to my history and show you the before of this photo so you can see what I've been doing. So this is what the photo originally looked like and after cropping it and bringing up the black point and changing the colors this is what it looks like now. So let me go back to the library and I'm going to export this photo to Photoshop because I want to work on just a few of those flyaways that she has. So I right click, go to edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop. So now that I'm in Photoshop, I'm going to use this band-aid tool and just remove this one big distracting flyaway. I'm not going to try to get rid of all of them because there are a ton of them, and I also think that it adds to the light in the picture. So there are some that are just a little out of control, so I'll remove those. The next thing that I'm going to do is bring out her eyes just a tiny, tiny bit. Now, a common problem that I see is a lot of people bring out the eyes too much, and it looks unnatural and a bit alien. So let me show you how to do that. Go to this tool here and select your Dodge tool. Make sure that the range is on mid-tones and turn down your exposure to about 10%. I have 11% selected. Next, zoom in on your eyes. I zoomed in by using a keyboard shortcut, which is Control Plus. And now you just brighten them a tiny, tiny bit. If I were to brighten them too much, it would look strange. So let me show you what that would look like. And I see that a lot and it always stands out to me. If the first thing that a person notices when they look at your picture is that it's highly edited, uh, you're doing something wrong. You want it to be subtle. You want it to bring out the best in your subject without drawing attention to the fact that your picture is edited. So I'm going to press Control-Z and Control-Alt-Z to undo those changes. 
and now her eyes are just very subtly brought out. So now that we're in Lightroom, this is the photo that I just worked on in Photoshop, and you can see that this picture does not have the flyaway. The eyes are a bit brighter. This was before I brought it into Photoshop. It's very subtle. The next portrait that I'm going to edit, I'm going to edit mostly in Photoshop. So I'm going to open it here so you can see a bigger version of the photo. Um, I'll zoom in for you, and I'll let you see uh, how the skin is a bit rough and um, there are some blemishes here um, and there are, are some distracting elements in the foreground that I'd like to get rid of and I want to do that in Photoshop so let me right click uh, go to edit in, edit in Photoshop now that I have this photo open in Photoshop I'm going to start by removing the biggest imperfections first and walk my way down to the smaller stuff I'm making this a very simple tutorial usually I'd use a lot of layer masks and um, other things like that, but this is just a very easy way. I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. So let me select this lasso tool and I'm going to select this big imperfection in the foreground. I think it might be a stick or something. And I'm going to just press backspace and that brings up the content aware fill. So I just click OK. If pressing backspace does not bring up content aware fill for you, you can press shift F5 and it will do the same thing. I don't see any other distracting elements in the background or foreground, so now I'm going to work on my face. Let me zoom in here, and the first thing I notice are the stray hairs. An easy way to get rid of them is to select this Band-Aid tool here and just highlight them and it will quickly take care of them. Now that I have the stray hairs removed, I'm going to remove any large blemishes. Now you can use the Band-Aid tool. So you can see I get rid of this one with the Band-Aid tool. Um, it tends to make any spot that it fixes a little bit blurry. I think that the lasso tool works a bit better, especially for larger imperfections. And so I'm going to switch to that. I'm using a picture of myself because I wouldn't zoom in on any of my friends' faces. That would be a bit rude. So I got rid of some of the major imperfections. Uh, before I go into smoothing up the skin, I want to talk about the Liquify tool, which a lot of people use and overuse and abuse. Now that I have my Liquify tool open, I'll show you what some of the tools do. This Forward Warp tool, you can move things around. Um, I'm doing it in an unnatural way just to demonstrate um, what the tool does. And let me undo that because I look creepy. The Reconstruct tool undoes any uh, liquefying that you've done. So if you uh, warp something, you, go, you can go to the Reconstruct tool and it fixes any mistakes that you did gradually so that you don't have to completely undo your work. You can just kind of touch it up as you, as you mold your subject. The Pucker tool pinches things. So I could make my lips tiny um, or make my nose a little smaller, or my eyes, whatever you want to do. Let me undo those. Uh, the bloat tool, yeah, bloat tool makes things a little bigger. A lot of times people like to use this on the eyes to widen them a bit. And this is one of those things that people can overdo. Because you're doing it gradually, you may think that it looks natural, um, but to other people it will look a little freakish. So any edits that you do, you probably want to dial them back by 50% because you're the one doing it and you're seeing it happen gradually and so you may not realize how unnatural your picture is getting. I'm going to undo all of this and if I were to liquefy this photo at all, um, one thing I would do is maybe even out my very sexy eyebrow. The next thing that I'm going to do now that I've liquefied, because you usually want to do your liquefying first before you change any colors or anything in the picture, um, I'm going to even out my skin. So. One thing about the way that I work on skin is that I use a plugin called Portraiture, and it's very expensive. And I don't expect many of you to have it. So I'm going to use Portraiture, but then I'm going to show you other ways on the cheap to fix the skin. So when I use Portraiture, I press Shift, and I select all the areas with skin. I just kind of do it roughly first, and then I touch it up the selection afterwards. So let me get my neck. You want to select all skin in the picture because the portraiture, the portraiture tool uh, can often change the tone and color of the skin and you don't want your skin to be different colors in different places. 
Now that I've selected my skin, I'm going to deselect places that I don't want the filter to be used. One of those places is my eyes because I don't want to smooth them out. I want to keep the detail in them uh, and in my eyelashes and my eyebrows. So I'm going to go right here and this is the deselect button. Usually I use, uh, just press down alt while I use my lasso tool. But you can also press that button. So I'll deselect around my eyes to keep the detail there. Um, sometimes I even deselect my lips, but they're looking, I didn't apply enough lipstick or something, they're looking a little funky, so I don't mind the tool smoothing those out a bit. I'm going to deselect my eyebrows because it would look unnatural if you could not see separate hairs. And that looks good. So now I'll go to filter, and I'm going to go to my portraiture tool. Since this isn't a portraiture tutorial, I'm not going to go over what all of these little sliders do, but I will say that I like to keep it quite natural. So let me zoom in so you can see. Um, it's not too smooth. You can see this is the before. When you drag, it shows you the before. When I let go, it shows you after. It's not too smooth, but it smoothed out my skin tone, smoothed out some wrinkles and pores, and I, it even adds a little bit of tone to the skin to make me look less pasty. So this looks good to me. I'll click OK. Let me go to my history so that you can see a before and after. So that is before my little edits and this is after. So it still looks nice and natural, but just a bit cleaner. Because I'm certain that many of you don't want to pay a lot for portraiture, I'm going to show you how to edit the skin without using plugins and just using the tools that you have in Photoshop. I am going to use the blur tool now to just smooth out the skin a tiny bit more. So go to Blur, and then go to Surface Blur. Let me zoom out so we can see what's going on. Okay, let me zoom in on a spot, and we can see what's happening here. So this is the before, when I let go, it shows the after. My radius is 5 pixels, my threshold is 4. If I were to turn it up more, things would get very unnatural, too blurred, it takes all of the pores out of the skin. Um, so you just want to use as little of the blur as possible. So let's go down to 5 for the radius, and 5 for the threshold. Uh, that still looks like a little bit too much for my taste, so I'm going to just bring it down to 4, and click OK. That just blurs the skin a tiny bit and smooths it out. I feel like I'm finished in Photoshop, and so I'm going to export the photo back into Lightroom and work on it there. So now that I'm in Lightroom, you can see the before picture, and then the after, uh, my skin is smoothed out, and the distractions in the foreground are gone, and I actually forgot to unbloat my lips, which is not something that I needed, but uh, no big deal for now. So as you can see, I kept that editing fairly basic. If you have any questions, you can ask down below in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe if you like me, and if you really like me, you'll buy my book. And if you really like our videos, you'll get three more hours. I already said that, but maybe you needed to be told again. Goodbye. Hey, guys, it's me. Donners. So, Stunning Digital Photography. Stunning Digital Photography, $8.99. $8.99, that's a bargain. That's a bargain. I can't even begin to add up how much of a bargain that is. That'd normally be hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars. You also get a book. It's already off to a bad start. Mm -hmm. You can say whatever you want on YouTube. You know what makes editing easy? Bjorn corn! If you love popcorn and the earth, consider buying my friend's popcorn, Bjorn corn! Bjorn corn! Bjorn corn. This was popped with the sun? That's crazy. Crazy delicious. This popcorn comes with a free bag? What doesn't this do? This tastes like heaven. This is awesome. This is really good. Super delicious. It has nice flavors. What if each book came with Bjorn corn? I'll just sprinkle a few pieces. I hope he doesn't mind just hugging his popcorn. I got Bjorn corn in my teeth. So I just went down in flames. I need to be more like Tony. All right, I'm gonna be like professional now, okay? This is a little good cop. Maybe not mentally sound cop. That was hard. I can't work under this pressure. I'll quit.